Well, hi guys and gals, it's me, George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man. And we're going to start off over here in the woodworking shop, catch-all. Anyway, uh, one of the things I got done today, and this video will encompass three days of work, because I just haven't gotten enough done each day to make a video and haven't had time. But the last thing I just finished doing was plumbing in this hook up here for my airline going into the shop so I don't have hoses running up over the wall or around and ground the floor and all that kind of stuff and as you can see I have uh, um, a hook up there so I can hook a hose up out here and if we come down here you see that this comes down and hooks into my air compressor which is right here so that's one of the things I've gotten done today now take you on to the next big thing and uh, close your eyes now okay now you can open them Woo! look at that we got the other door on and I think we love it how cool is that found that in the midst of my scrap stuff around here so let me take you and demonstrate how it works, okay? And I've got more surprises for you inside. So, I haven't done the latch on the uh, storm door yet, glass door, whatever you want to call it. But because of the, uh, because of the automatic closer, it closes right tight against this door anyway. And I will eventually be putting a latch on it that will be able to latch and hold it shut. And uh, we'll come inside here and look back. And there's the inside of our door. Yep, it's all pegboard on the inside. And uh, I made it so it swings in. And I have a barrel bolt here at the top. And there's also one at the bottom which I had already disconnected. And so, then it swings in like that, and it's out of the way. If I want to, I can swing both doors open and have my entry totally open for uh, access to the lift, don't you know? And I have two pieces that I can add to either side of this ramp um, so that it will accommodate lawnmowers or goofy carts. Of course, bicycles will go right up this ramp with no problem. So all I did to do that was disconnect this here at the top. And uh, see if I could do this one-handed with you guys watching me. Now I'm going to try not to get too nervous with you guys watching me. You know, I'm always telling guys, make sure you use a tripod when you're doing this stuff so you're not doing so much shaky cam work. Yeah, well... Here I go, I, not practicing what I preach. Here we go, we got it unlocked now, and it will come closed. How's that? And then I could just leave this one open like it is, or I can swing it over and uh, latch it up just like that at the top. And come down here to the bottom. If I can get down there, the floor is awful far down these days, you know what I mean? And there it is, latched on the bottom, so it's nice and solid. So, yeah, that takes care of our door. Now, what about them apples? Huh? Look at that ceiling. We got ceiling all across the front section. Let me go in the back section so you can maybe you can see the whole thing or most of it anyway. Look at that. How cool is that, huh? Wow, we got to love it. And of course, I certainly discovered how out of square this whole unit is again. And I knew that, but I first tried 
uh, scribing pieces to fit the wall and all that. Well, I gave up on that pretty quick because that was going to be too time consuming. So we get it all done and I made some moldings to go around the edges. And as you can see, we're right up tight there. I put a trim board. Oh, stop shaking, George. I put a trim board on the outside of the building to close up the gap over top. And then this is another trim board on the inside that holds that end of the ceiling panels up. And I haven't put the batter boards on there yet because that's where our window is going to go, you know. Yep. So uh, I haven't had time to dig out my pegboard hooks yet. But there's another whole panel of pegboard opportunity. And I still have one piece left that might find its place oh, over here or something like that to hang up tools that go for parts cleaning. You never know how that's going to work out. So yeah, that's where we're at. And well, I started in the back. And I did what I said I wasn't going to do. I put my panel across the joist instead of going in between the joist like this. And I'm thinking maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this part off just like it is all the way over to the wall. Of course, I can't finish it yet because i got to go outside and cut all those tails down and put a finished board on the outside to close that in. Uh, just like I did for the front section already. So then after I get this finished off, then I'm thinking that I'm going to put cleats in here so that my, instead of my paneling being way up in, let me try this one-handed here. Whoa! Catch it, George! Yahoo! Well, we don't want to stay up in here no matter how I do it. Anyway, I had thought about putting it all the way up to the ceiling. And I'm thinking, why would I want to do that? The, the only reason I would, would be to accommodate the lights hanging down. Uh, so I'm thinking I, I need to keep it at least flush with the bottom of the rafters. Can't go any lower than that, or don't want to go any lower than that. But I, I even might be able to do that because... Let me show you something here. Now, put this up here. And now I am right over my bench. Here's my bench. Yeah. And let me get right in here. Oh, I can't get there because I get too much junk on the bench. But see, I can... Uh, <laughs> I can hold it up with my head. I can actually fit in here, you know. So if I was working on the bench, I would have to be tipping my head down. Well, you know, I just realized that when you're working on something, the bench, you usually get your head tipped down anyway. And so then you end up with a space over your head if you don't have a hat on like that. See that? So we're, uh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I have ordered my lights for in here. And I ordered a 10-pack. Yes, I did. I ordered a 10-pack. So I already have figured out there's going to be at least five in my front area here. And maybe six, depending on how I need the layout to be in the back section. And if I were to put one light right along this joist here, see that one carries back there, so if I put one right there, and then I come over here, and this one's out about two feet away from the wall, and put one right along the bottom of that one, um, and maybe two of those, one side by side, two over there, and then I could put a, the fifth one back here. But we'll see. Um, it's all going to be dependent on how much light I get out of each of these four footers. You know what I'm saying? So I need really good light right here over the lathe. And 
I'd like to have good light over here. I think this is, I'm going to have a, um, I think I'm going to have a couple of bench grinders over here. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Anyway. But we want good lighting no matter what. And I do have one regular fluorescent light fixture that um, I have LED bulbs for. So even if I need one more light fixture, I'll have it. And oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't show you my... Did I show you this? I can't even remember. This is where my airline comes through the wall. It just came just below my trim for the ceiling. And I didn't plan it that way. I wanted it up high out of the way, but whew, and I have a shutoff valve on it so I can turn it off. And uh, I'm hoping that once I get everything set up, I'm going to go around and check all my fittings and make sure I don't have any leaks. And that way I won't have to be shutting my compressor off all the time. Um, up till now I've always had some kind of leak and it would um, bleed down after a while, don't you know. But we'll see. And uh, you can see how much my boards have started shrinking already. Yep, look at that. I put them on tight. But that's okay. We'll wait until they've finished shrinking. I'm guessing that those boards there were on tight originally before they started doing their batter boards. So that's where we're at today. I'm pretty tickled with that progress. Um, I'm not going to finish the back ceiling until I get the rest of my lights so I can make a decision on that. I think probably one of my next goals is to get this out of here and get my big old toolbox in here. One of the problems that I keep running into, oh yeah, this is the stuff I'm putting on the ceilings right here. It's three quarters of an inch thick styrofoam. It's uh, white on one side and has a plastic coating on it, so it's nice and smooth. And then the back side is this, um, yeah, what do I want to say? Foil, that's it foil face and that's what goes up towards the ceiling to reflect the heat up so yeah um one of the i started to say one of the problems i have and i'm going to shut everything off now that's another project i'm looking forward to very soon is doing my wiring which i'm going to need for hooking up my lights properly but uh one of the problems I run into is not being able to find my tools or materials that I know I already have uh, because so much stuff is in bins and I haven't unpacked all the bins and I've rifled through stuff several times and I'm thinking probably once I get this all done I'll find stuff that I ended up going out and buying. You know, that's how it goes. So, I'll take you over here. And I can show you the piece that I put right along there. And as you can see, this caulking there, and I caulked along the top of it too, so that's what seals my gable end. And I got my ladders out of the way, so they're not underfoot. So, yep, we're working at it. I told my wife yesterday, I said, I'm going to have to dedicate one day just for cleaning up this mess. All the wood stuff is no problem. The back part of my property over there is almost like a cliff in one place. It drops right off. And so I think I'll take the wood over there and dump it over the edge and it can just rot and go back to nature where it came from. And uh, the other stuff, of course, I'll have to take it to the dump. And at this point, thankfully, it doesn't cost anything to go to the dump here, which I'm very grateful for. The only thing it costs for is tires. I had to pay a buck for a tire I took the other day. So, I hope everything's good where you are. 
and that you're enjoying the beautiful weather, it has been beautiful here for sure. So until next time, this is George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man. And you're looking at Goofy's Garage, the new Goofy Garage. Thanks for watching, commenting, and for subscribing. Bye now.